Hey, it's Aaron, the Metal Theologian. So, um, I got a little surprise in the mail today. Hang on, I gotta open my drink up here. Remember one of these fucking Nitro Pepsis again? Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I'm pretty into these, man. I'll be honest. So, uh, yeah, I got a little surprise in the mail today from, uh, Mr. Eric Weinbender. Uh, so I'm going to bust that open. I haven't done one of these, like, old-style, like, BCLT videos in a long time, you know? I don't know. I'm actually kind of shied away from him. Because I figure no one ever watches a video called BCLT from somebody, right? So if I want to hype someone's channel, then I don't really want to, uh... You know, put it. I, I want to bury the video by saying I'm hyping this in a thing. You know what I'm saying? So uh, yeah. Anyway, it has our uh, addresses on here. Jesus Christ. So yeah. So this is a pretty big pack. Like, I'm a little bit freaked here. I mean, we'll see. But you know. Like, it feels like it's got some heft to it, you know what I'm saying? It's like... Oh, by the way, we're listening to Griffin. I actually busted this out because uh, York Shard was talking about this record in uh, his last video. You should check that out. He usually talks about punk, but it's a funny channel to watch, dude. So, yeah, anyway, this is Griffin, Flight of the Griffin. And, um... If you, like, pay really close attention, you'll know that I really, uh, love, like, band, uh... I love album titles, especially debut albums, where the band name is in the name of the album. So like, Griffin, Flight of the Griffin. Or like, Demon, Night of the Demon. Those are just like, perfect. Like, that's what I'm gonna want to go for with my band one of these days. I just always find that amusing. So, I actually got this um, out of a dollar bin when I was living in LA. And like, just in case that wasn't enough reason to buy it right there, that fucking pose was. So yeah, this record smokes. You know, I've been into a shit on the shrapnel label because it's on shrapnel. This is like one of the exceptions. This is one reason why if you say, hey man, you really got to hear this record, it's a, uh, it's a shrapnel. Um, I'll actually still listen to it even though it's a shrapnel, you know what I'm saying? And I'm fucking laughing because I just saw it here. I know why Eric wanted me to make the fucking video on camera now, so. So, <coughs> I mean, there's there's one important one. Oh, Jesus, dude, fuck. All right, so, um, all right, I, you know, I don't always read the fucking letters, but I love this one, so. Uh, keep an eye out for this Venom, that's true. He said, um, he also threw in a couple of essentials. So the essentials are, um... Actually, I didn't even fucking show what this record is. I'm just like saying, oh, like you can see what I'm doing. This is a copy of Eine Kleine Nachtmusik by Venom. And uh, yeah, I, you know, not only have I never owned this before, but I don't think I've ever actually heard this record all the way through. Like when this thing was around and easy to get, I didn't really give a shit about Venom. Yeah, there was such a time. It was like back in the 80s, right? And then when I got into Venom, the shit was a little bit harder to find. And it was like, you know, it's not like... Uh, you know, I have some of those assaults. Those are kind of fun, but it's not like it's the greatest stuff, so. Just because of when this one's from, I've become increasingly curious about this record. So it was really cool of you to send it, Eric. I appreciate it a lot. Yeah, I mean, like the fucking... Uh, you know, I, I don't even go through one by one. Because actually, the, other, the, the point of the pack is kind of the other ones here. So, um... Oh yeah, it has the hit on it. I just had to check. Yeah, so this was in there. Is this a hypnosis cover? It seems a little late for it, but it kind of seems like there's something weird with the perspective like it might have been. Yeah, whatever. I'm just being up to Steve like pretend to obsess on that. Yeah, it's fucking Night Ranger. Brad Gillis is on this. It's so funny. Like intellectually, I knew that there was a Night Ranger and Ozzy connection through Brad Gillis.
but I've never really been confronted with it before in a piece of vinyl in my living room. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll cop to the fact that I've never actually listened to this album. Okay, so I will listen to this album and report back. It's funny, I'm making a big deal out of this one, the actual like record, I didn't care about whatever. You know, yeah, Venom. Of course, Venom's cool. You know, everybody likes Venom. If people don't like Venom, they're wrong, and they probably even know it, you know? You know, Venom's a sort of band where if you're not into Venom, people say, yeah, I realize Venom's kind of a big deal, but, you know. It's sort of how I am with Tank, you know? Like, I really like Tank in a way, but they just, like, not one of my bands, you know what I mean? So I sort of feel a little apologetic about the fact that I don't like Tank more or Raven, you know? So, uh, yeah, so, anyway, I'm going way fucking down. I'm, like, creating all this headcanon here. Um, I've never listened to this Night Ranger album all the way through. So, um, I'll actually even put it on. No, if I put it on right now, I'm guaranteed to, like, get a copyright thing. But you know something? I'm going to put it on anyway. You know why? Because you can still rock in America. Fuck yeah, dude. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to fucking rock right now, man. Actually, I suspect the title should be more like... You can still, like, be depressed in America or something like that. God damn, you can still... You know, it's the use of parentheses, too, that's so masterful here. You can still rock in America. It's like... The fucking guy who, like, thought of the song title imagined himself, like, introducing it on the radio. is like, rock in America. You can still rock in America. Like, he was thinking he was saying, like, Bond, James Bond or something like that. But he was just fucking really dumb. You watch me like this. This actually doesn't sound too bad. It's definitely kind of happy, but it's not as heinous as I expected it to be, I'll be honest. See, there was really never a, t a time in my life when I would have sought out a record with a cover like this. That's a big part of the problem here. Yeah, and this is corny, but you know, I think I might kind of like it, so. Goddamn. You know, <laughs> if this is gonna be the fucking video where like, um, I decide I actually like Night Ranger, then I'm probably doing the right thing if I just call it VCLT from Eric Weindender because I don't want anyone to watch the video. But I'm fucking going fucking... Yeah, you know, so this is kind of fun. I kind of like Night Ranger, you know? Dude, that synth is so fucking boring. You know, Chromie D's been giving me shit about this. He's been saying that, uh... I, I said something about, like, liking AOR because I like some Blue Oyster Cult record. He was like, oh, I've known for a long time you like AOR. You just haven't figured it out yet. And I told him, actually, I was like, I really hope you're not right about that. Anyway, so here's what, here's what the other one is. This is kind of like the important one, because I sort of recognize this when I fell out. But this is a four-way anal touch flight record. And I'll be honest, I don't completely understand what the deal is with it. I think that all that it is is like, we, people mail it around and like sign it when they're done with it or something. But I'm a little disappointed to see that I'm only fourth on here. I see it's the VC share copy. This is actually unique. Like, this is a collector's item, like, legit. It's funny that that's on there, too. Yeah, so it's kind of a corny-ass name, but, you know, based on how people have talked about it, I'm actually really curious to hear it, so, um... Fuck it, I'll just sample from it. I'm, actually, I kind of want to listen to Night Ranger as a thing. I'm kind of digging this. Yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just in a fucking mood today or something. I feel like I've been at least listen to a little bit of this. I'm gonna put it on for a minute, and then we'll come back to Night Ranger if there's still something to talk about at that point, okay? Oh shit, where's the fucking inner sleeve? God damn, that was so fucking corny. 
don't even remember how fucking Sister Christian goes. Isn't it like a ballad or something like that? I know it's one of those... Oh, look, it's Viking metal. <laughs> yeah. I hope I'm not like breaking the rules by playing it on the video, because no one's ever played it on the thing before, so... Yeah, I'm like looking to make sure I get side A first, like it's gonna fucking matter. I tend to not like it when bands have names like four way anal touch fight because it sounds like they're trying really hard, you know? And that generally puts me off a little bit. But like people are saying they didn't like this record, but the way they didn't like it and the reasons for which they didn't like it intrigued me. I don't know if this is the right speed or not. That's kind of a funny little logo there. Quite a little short. You could put that on like, um, like on your fingers. You know what I mean? Like on your fist. You like four W A T. Or is that the right way? Yeah. I can go like this at the show. You can do it on each fist. Yeah, I think it was the wrong speed. I don't know, maybe not. I think this is manifesto. Looks like the titles here. It's a fucking ridiculous video. You know what this sounds like? This sounds like it's a fucking, um, like a play on record. Which is kind of a little bit of a bummer because, um, it's like kind of, it's like not good, but it's like boring too. It's like, there are a couple of like, like there's a J.A. Caesar record that actually kind of goes for some money ridiculously. But, um, a couple of his records are good, but there's at least one that's just like a fucking, it sounds like it's a fucking like Japanese story being told on a record. And it's just kind of fucking boring. And like, you know what else that reminds me of is, um, that ESP record, The Coach with Six Insides. Yeah, if you want to know who the sucker was, who was kind of curious enough to check that one out, like, because it was advertised on the back of an, an ESP record, like the, uh, excuse me, like the Fugs or something like that. Well, that was me. And I checked out The Coach with Six Insides, and that record was pretty much unlistenable. It's supposed to be like a play, like a, um... I don't know, like a sound play based on Finnegan's Wake or something like that. And it was just like, you, you know, it's, you listen to it, you go, that sounds kind of funny, you know, I hope that's entertaining, but, um. Yeah, we're getting back down to business here, though, because fuck the coach with six and size. We're getting back to the business of Night Ranger here. Seeing how this goes. This kind of reminds me of fucking Mr. Roboto right here. This is really terrible, man. The thing is, this isn't really metal at all, you know? This doesn't really even mimic metal. I'm like thinking about it in terms of like Baudrillard now. How about that for some pretentious shit? What are the Baudrillardian implications of uh, this fucking Night Ranger record? Hang on a sec. Just look up what stage we're in here. Now I'm totally fucking around. It doesn't really sound like um, it's an imitation of metal, though, does it? Maybe it is. You know, they wanted to be a rock and roll band, these guys did. God, that keyboard. 
Yeah, I don't know. I really don't hate this anywhere near as much as I was supposed to. You know what's funny is like, I, well, I already said this. I barely talked about Venom, but fuck Venom, whatever. The fact is, I listen to Venom all the time for pleasure anyway, but I can't remember the last time I listened to Night Ranger, let alone voluntarily. It's probably the first time I've ever listened to this band voluntarily, to be honest with you. And like, there's something I want to be clear about here too. This sucks, <laughs> okay? I mean, this is really pretty fucking heinous. It's just, like, the suck is kind of appealing to me because like, there's, there's still some rock and roll intent, like, coming through the layer of suck, you know what I mean? It's like punching through, like, the sheen of suck that's sort of over the surface of it. And, like, I can kind of hang with that, you know? We're just really soft and whisked out on top of being so, like, fundamentally wimpy. That's what I'm, like, really just not on board, you know? I'm trying to think of one. Here's something, there's one over here. It might have been like Cinderella. No, you know what it was? It was fucking rats. Yeah, someone gave me some records. I was kind of sampling them, trying to decide what to do with them and shit. Ah, whatever, that's a digression. I don't even feel like going into. I think it's playing along for a VCLT from video, but this video is going to be called um, Eric Weinbender Puts Me On to Night Ranger. And only the dedicated fans who actually watch this shit will realize that uh, I actually got the four-way anal touch fight record, too, and uh, I can figure out what the deal is with it. I, I seriously, I don't even know what the fucking protocol is. I know what I'm going to do with it, though. I'm going to review it one way or another and uh, pass it on. Anyway, subscribe to Eric Weinbender. Subscribe to Yorkshire because he's talking about that fucking good Griffin record, too. Um, and uh, thanks for watching.